So hey everyone, like I don't spend enough time here at the store, I'm back doing some shopping. And a week from today is the High Holy Feast Day, St. Patrick's Day of course. And so to celebrate, I'm going to make bangers and mash, and I'll show you how to do it. Now here in the Finger Lakes region of New York, there is a company that makes Irish bangers. It has something of a, almost a breakfast sausage sort of flavor. If you want something spicier, go to your meat department or your deli and tell them that you're looking for something with a little bit more spice. We're going to use bangers today. So a few things I'll be doing different, because you know I always do things different, is I'll be adding mushrooms to the onion gravy, and I'll also be using a little bit of spinach in the mashed potatoes. I love spinach, love mushrooms. Now, to be honest, the term bangers and mash is actually a British and Australian term for what in Ireland is called sausage and gravy. Basically the same thing, a few differences here and there. One thing I am leaving out is the Guinness that some people use to help make the gravy. To my taste buds, it tastes a little too sweet. So what we are going to use will be beef gravy, demi-glaze, and if necessary, some red wine vinegar. So for our dinner tonight, I decided to start with making dessert first. And what better than chocolate pudding? If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know I love the pre-measured things. Half cup sugar, quarter cup cornstarch, Two and three quarter cups, I used half and half. You can use regular milk, whole milk. One teaspoon vanilla extract. Three tablespoons of cocoa powder. Two tablespoons of butter and one eighth teaspoon of salt. You take the dry ingredients, combine them together. And then we're gonna take a fork and simply mix them so they look uniform. And as you mix them, it's going to start to look like commercially made pudding mix. You go to the baking aisle, get your pudding mix there. It's going to look a lot like it. This is a good thing. This is going to mean that everything is going to be integrated together evenly. I took the half and half and the butter, put them into a pot, put it on medium heat, Want to get the butter melted i broke it up into four little bits ease in melting so as it's going here you can see it's starting to bubble just a little around the edge this is a good thing you want to take your whisk and make sure it's all integrated together the object of the game is to have uniformity throughout the mixture so as we're doing this, we're going to then start sprinkling in our dry goods, whisking as we do it. And this one is going to look very lumpy. It's all right. It will all dissolve, all mix in. You must keep stirring. Here it is after just a moment. I pause just long enough to take this pick coming together you want to keep going with this until it starts to visibly thicken it may even start to slightly boil a little you'll see it start to steam it's sticking to my whisk at this point I know it is time to start plating so I have my four ramekins and I started putting a scoop of pudding into each one Over here I'm with this then I'm going to put it into the refrigerator be all set and you are ready to go into stage two here I have four Idaho potatoes yes they're different sizes but it's not going to matter because we are going to dice these up before putting them on into the pot to cook so the first thing I did was I quartered them went down lengthwise and then one more time so we have smaller pieces from here, I'm going to cut them up into smaller, almost thumb width pieces. Now you've noticed I've left the skin on. You can peel it off, but I like the rustic look. 
and B, there are nutrients there I don't want to lose. So I, I leave the skin on. If it's a fancier dinner, by all means, feel free to peel them. Place them into a pot. Add salt to the water. Put a lid on, put it on high, and let it go. These are, are the bangers. They have a very white color to them. They're in a hot skillet, a little bit of oil. We're going to let them go. We're going to rotate them about every five to seven minutes to make sure they have a nice golden brown color. Now, if you like, you can go and substitute in a vegan sausage, a chicken sausage, whatever sausage you prefer, go for it. So as you can see right here, the colors are starting to come out and with the golden brown delicious color really does come the flavor. Take your time so it's all done. Our potatoes have started boiling away. I'm going to reduce it up down to a medium, cover it, let them go for 20 minutes. Time to start working on the peas. To start off we're going to take bits of bacon and place them into a non-stick skillet. We are going to try and render out some of the fat from the bacon. With this, we'll then add the peas with the bacon and let them go for a little bit. It adds a wonderful flavor. On top of this, we'll put in a little pinch of dill. And then a pad of butter this case, Irish butter. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's fun. Put this on low. Simply let that go and check our sausages. Getting very nice. Put them into the corner of the pan so they can start to brown on all the edges. They are just about ready to go into a container to hold them until dinner. Now in this horribly overexposed image is a Spanish onion. We're going to take and cut this apart and place it into the, a skillet, a little bit of oil, and start to let this go. This is the same skillet I used for the, the sausages a moment ago. I'm going to absorb some of that flavor. With this, put on a sprinkle of salt. This will help draw, draw the water out of the onions. We're going to let them go on medium, medium high heat. You want to hear that sizzle? It means things are starting to go. In the meantime, let's check our potatoes. It's been about 20 minutes now. I've drained them, placed in some butter, starting to mix that around. I took a fork to them to come apart easily. We are set to start mashing them. So with this, you can see the steam coming from as I'm starting to mix in the butter. Added a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper. We're going to keep the flavor simple. I've added in about a quarter cup of milk to this. I started to physically mash them. You can use a mixer, but I like the rusticness of using the masher. Now I had a little bit of spinach in my refrigerator. I took it, cut it small, and then mixed it on in with the potatoes. The heat from the potatoes is going to cook the spinach and adds a little bit of color to it. Everything is about adding color and flavor and do it in layers. So we mix this in, put the top on to keep warm. Let's get back to our gravy. So here we have our onions. I've added a small container of pre-sliced mushrooms from the grocery store. Just regular white button. Let them cook until they start to caramelize as well. Then I added one tablespoon of flour. Mix this in and let the flour cook. This will get rid of any paste, pasty sort of taste that you can get from just using flour direct. Then I added a small container of demi-glaze. Demi-glaze is a brown sauce. 
and it helps to make a good rich gravy. After this I added one small can of beef stock, mix that in, let that start to reduce. I also added a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. Let's start plating. We take our mashed potatoes, one part of a bowl, peas with the bacon, a little bit of dill on the other part. Then we take two of the sausages and we lay them across like this. Just looks pretty. So we're almost there. We're going to take a scoop of our brown gravy and put that across. The reason I added the red wine vinegar to it was to help cut away some of the savoriness so it's not quite as savory but still has great flavor. So we're ready to go, ready to serve. I had some sourdough bread, a little bit of butter in order to sop up the gravy and we're ready to sit down and eat. And I don't know about you, but I can smell the aromas. It looks great. The flavors are phenomenal. Dessert is right there. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for dinner. So until next time, thanks for joining me and here's cooking with you.